Hello, welcome to Waypoint Survival. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a pocket fishing kit out of this chalk line. Stay tuned. Before we get started, I'd like to remind everyone to make sure and give this video a thumbs up if you like the video. Also, make sure and check out our website, www.waypointsurvival.com. We teach survival and bushcraft here at the Waypoint Survival School in Southern Ohio. And we teach all the way from Phase 1 survival and bushcraft through advanced and pioneer classes all the way up to primitive survival and bushcraft. You'll find a lot of information on our website. We'd love to have you in a class. To do this project, you're going to need a few things. First of all, a Phillips screwdriver, a small pair of fingernail clippers, I have seven number eight hooks, and I have four of the number six. We have six brass swivels, we have a total of nine lead sinkers, we have a tube here that comes from an X-Acto type knife blade set, we have a grenade pouch. And then the main and the most important thing is this brand new Irwin straight line, which sells for about $10. It's a chalk line or a chalk box. The first thing you're going to do is you want to cut around here and remove the chalk box from the packaging. Of course, those of you familiar with this know what this is. This is a chalk line to snap a straight line when you're doing carpentry and remodeling work. Now, do notice that this one comes with a wide gate. And this is important. Try to get the one that has this larger opening. So a little easier to fill up with chalk, but also works better for our purpose. It's also a speed reel. It has a one to three gear ratio, which means you're gonna wind it up much faster. And it makes it a little better for our pocket fishing kit. Next thing we're going to do is on the back side, there's a couple of Phillips screws, and we're going to remove those very carefully, set those aside. And now this chalk box will open. And this, of course, is how you replace the line. So this we don't need right now. We'll set that aside. This slides in a track, so make sure you don't lose that. We'll set that to the side. And now you can see we have the chalk line and the spool, which comes out very easily. So we're going to take this off. This is already previously loosened to make this a little easier. You may have to cut this. This is the piece that goes on the board or uh, plywood, whatever it is you're cutting. Go you ahead and remove this metal part. We don't need this. Of course, you could save it if you need it for something else. And then we can simply pull this through. There's a little metal piece there. We'll pull that out. Now we need to wrap this onto some, something else. Uh, a tube or a stick or something like that. Now there may be some grease on here so do be careful you get it on your fingers. So you want to wind the string around a stick as I said before or a tube of some sort. This is from some bank line that I had and there's a hundred feet of it on here so it's good strong string so it's always good to keep and it's just simply tied around the spool. So we're going to cut that off and move to the next step. Now that we've got that cut off, we're going to put some fishing line on here. And you may be wondering why we don't just use the cotton string. Well, you could. And uh, in an emergency, that would work okay. You could catch a fish on it. It's pretty strong. But being a cotton-type fabric string, uh, it's going to absorb water and it's going to get really wet. It's not going to drain and it's going to want to start rotting, especially inside of this box arrangement. So it's best not to use this for fishing. The type of fishing line that I've opted to use is spider wire, and this is a 50 pound test, so you don't have to use anything near this heavy, but using this, it's a green, uh, I can also use it to sew with, and I can use it to build shelters with, or traps, triggers, things like that. So there's quite a lot in here, and so uh, over 300 feet, I'm not sure I'll use all of that, obviously, but uh, we're going to see how much we can get on here. Now this is a, a green string, so this uh, line is going to be a little bit hard to see, and it is a braided line. Now before we attach this line, there's something we need to do very important with the tag end. It has to fit in through this little metal piece right here. So we're going to put that in first, pull that on through, and then we're just going to simply tie 
a slip knot and then put a simple overhand stop knot in the end. Just like this. So it looks like that. And then you can use a knife or clippers to cut off that tag end. Now that we've got our loop, we simply put it over top of the spool and pull it down and snug it good. And we reassemble the box. This has a little washer, like a felt washer. And make sure this goes securely into the square. It's a square. This is what gives you your drive. So that goes in there. Comes out the front. Make sure to put the little door back in. put it back together. Once you get that put back together then make sure to reinstall the screws so that it doesn't come apart. Now of course if you have a multi-tool with you or something like that you don't actually have to have a screwdriver because you'll probably have a screwdriver on your multi-tool or Swiss Army knife. Just make sure those are snug down really good. Alright, it's nice and tight and now all we do as we start cranking, it's going in really nice and you can open this up and you can track inside about how well it is spooling the line for you. And just do this until you get as much line in there as you want. I'll do that and get back with you. A bit of a tip for you, when you are cranking this up, make sure you pinch the line and hold this tight so that it winds nicely inside. I had a bit of a tangle. I had to take it apart and start over. So anyway, but I got most of it on there. Quite a bit of line and uh, I think that's going to work great. Alright, next we need to attach a sinker and a hook. I'm going to use one of the very small number 8 hooks. Alright, and we're just going to do the simple simple knot here, twist the hook, the loop, two, three, four, five, and six, come back through the eye, and then back up through the loop. Like that. Pull that tight. Alright, there we go. After cutting off the little tag end, we want to take one of our split washers and put it down here fairly close on the line. And these are reusable split shot. And then simply pinch it onto the line like so. There we have it. Next we take the little tube from the X-Acto type knife and you can get these at just about any store, hobby store. And then we're going to put the rest of the hooks in. We're going to start with the very small hooks. So there's six of those. And there are four of the larger hooks shake it down in there. Then we have our brass swivels. Put those in. Once you get all those in, make sure you shake everything down to the bottom. Make sure I give as much space as possible. And we take the rest of the split shot and very carefully put it in the tube. Once you get all that in there and nice and tight, you want to take this and you want to stick it down into this place here and slide it kind of forward where it can lay down inside. Plenty of room down in there. And then you take the clippers, which of course you can use to cut the line, etc. And it slides down there as well. Then you want to take the hook and the sinker Put it down inside there as well. Close this up. Pull it tight. And there you go. It's nice and tight. It snaps in place. 
It's not going to fall apart. When you get to where you want to fish, you simply open it up and remove the hook and sinker so that hangs loose. And then you'll want to shake it to get to the things that are inside. It'll take a little bit of work to get that out of there, but it's all right, it'll come out. There we go. Of course, you want to put these in here carefully so that they aren't hard to get out. And always put the clippers in first, that works best. And then, closing this up, when you push on this line here, there's got like a button that's spring-loaded. And you push on this, you can easily pull this out and it spins inside so you don't have to use this handle. So basically now you are line fishing. So you pull out however much you want. You would cast it by hand, open this up, and then reel in slowly. And it even clicks a little bit as you pull it in. It also fits very nicely into this grenade pouch. Like it was made for it. Slides in just like that. Comes over. Snaps in. Now you can attach it to your gear. Carry it on your belt. Or of course if you don't want to carry it like this you can just put it in your pocket. I did want to add that I got this idea from a friend of mine many years ago that I worked with when I ran my construction company. And he told me about it and so I wanted to build one on camera and show you what it was like. I believe that there's one other video online uh, from another fellow that did it, but uh, he didn't have a fishing kit in his, so I wanted that to add to mine. This is James Bender for Waypoint Survival. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Also make sure and check out the links in the description box below just under the more button. While you're down there, you'll also find our waypointsurvival.com link. And this is where you can sign up to take survival and bushcraft classes here at our beautiful training facility in Southern Ohio. And if you haven't already done so, please subscribe to the channel. We'd really appreciate it. And when you do subscribe, make sure to press that bell button so that you can stay notified of all of our upcoming videos. And we'll talk to you next time.